Got another set of questions for the amount of substance topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay so we'll make a start so the first thing I want to do is use the ideal gas equation to get the moles of A and then we're going to use the mass divide by the moles to get the MR. So there's the rearrangement for moles so we'll just put the numbers in now. Just be careful with your unit conversions, so um, pressure has to be in pascals, well it, it is, so we just keep that as it is. The volume needs to be in cubic metres, they've put it in cubic centimetres, so all I do is put it times 10 to the minus 6 after the centimetres cubed value, divided by R, the gas constant, multiplied by the temperature, which has to be in Kelvin, so we need to add 273 onto 100. So we're getting 0 0.00245 moles of A, so we'll just work out the MR now. So mass over moles gives 174.6. So it's a bit of trial and error now. So the first thing we'll look at is what if there was two bromines in. So the MR of two bromines is 159.8, so they were under the 174.6. So we'll put a 19 on for a fluorine and we've gone past. So it can't have two bromines in, it must only have one. So one bromine is obviously 79.9, so if we take that from the MR, we've got 94.7 left. So if we divide that by the MR of one fluorine, which is 19, we get approximately 5, I think it's 4.98 on the calculator. So the formula, the molecular formula of A must be Br F5. Moving on to the next question, so I've got my usual visualisation, so we've got 3.89 grams of barium hydroxide and that's been dissolved in 100 cm cubed of water. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out how many moles of barium hydroxide that is. So mass over MR is given 0.02271 moles. So if we think about how this is dissolving, for each mole of barium hydroxide we've got, we get a mole of barium 2 plus ions, but importantly two moles of hydroxide ions. So the moles of hydroxide ions in the beaker is going to be two times that. So the concentration is the moles over the volume. The volume, remember, needs to be in decimeters cubed, so it's 0 0.04542 over 0 0.1, which to three significant figures is 0 0.454 moles per decimeters cubed. Moving on to part B, what's meant by concordant titrous? Well, they're titrous that agree to 0 0.10 cm cubed of each other. And now the calculation. So I've just transferred the relevant information from above to here. So we've got 25 cm cubed of barium hydroxide. It's titrated against the nitric acid, which had that concentration, and the mean titra came out at that. We've got to calculate the concentration of this. So, first thing I'm going to do is work out the moles of the nitric acid, concentration times volume. Remember the volume's got to be in decimeters cubed, so that's coming out at 0 0.00428 moles. The moles of barium hydroxide will be half as many because of the ratio. So we've got 0.00214 moles of barium hydroxide. Well, that's in 25 cm cubed, so concentration is moles divided by volume. So that's coming out with a concentration of 0 0.0856 moles per decimeters cubed. So we're moving on to the final question now. We've got to work out the minimum volume in cm cubed of this concentration HCl needed for this reaction. So the first thing we'll do is work out how many moles of nickel we've got, mass over MR. So the moles of nickel is coming out at 0 0.00327. The moles of hydrochloric acid needed is going to be double that from the mole ratio. So that's 0.00654. So the volume of HCl needed is going to be the moles divided by the concentration of the acid. The important thing to bear in mind here is the volume that we get here is in decimeters cubed. So we need to multiply this by a thousand to put it into centimeters cubed, which to three significant figures is 43.6. Next part, so the volume of hydrogen in cm cubed produced at RTP, well the mole ratio between the nickel and the hydrogen is one to one. So we're going to get that many moles of hydrogen. So to turn that into a volume at RTP in centimetres cubed, we need to multiply the moles by 24,000, which comes out at 78.5 centimetres cubed. So moving on to the last part of the question, which I think is quite tricky to be honest. So there's just a summary of what we know so far. 
So we've used that many moles of nickel, it needed exactly that many moles of HCl, and it made that many moles of hydrogen. So looking at the magnesium equation now, you'll see it's got the same stoichiometry, the same mole ratio running through it. We're using the same volume and concentration of HCl, so we've got the same number of moles as before, but we've got more moles of magnesium because we're using the same mass, but it's got a lower MR. So for these to all react, we're actually going to need twice as many moles of HCl, so we're going to need 0.0158 moles of HCl for all of them to react. Well, we've still got the same moles as before, so the magnesium's now in excess because it's not all going to react. So the HCl is the limiting reagent, which is obviously going to influence the volume of hydrogen. So look at the ratio, 2 to 1. So we're going to get half as many moles of H2, which is the same as before, 0.00327. So the volume of hydrogen will be exactly the same.